and today we're going to be doing some old school stick welding in a very heavy duty application. You, you want to show us what we got set up here? Yeah, so basically what we're working with here is a one inch bevel, which is pretty thick, you can see. All right, we've got a 30 degree bevel on here. This is a typical D11 structural code weld. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on a backing strap, space it about 3 16 of an inch per the code book, and then we are going to fill it up with some 70-24 rods. So these are very thick, heavy industrial rods. They can only be welded in the flat and horizontal fillet position. Try to run them overhead, try to run them vertical. Like I say, try. Won't work out very well. I've tried it before. Um, so this is a, a pretty good structural code test. Um, and being that it's one inch and these 7024 rods, it's going to fill up pretty fast. All right, so I know you guys have probably heard everybody say, oh, I can stick well through anything, any type of dirt, rust, water, mill scale, that's fine. But for the sake of testing and having it look clean and tie in well, which is what the goal is here, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna grind the mill scale off. So we're gonna grind the mill scale off the backing strap and we're gonna grind the mill scale off the bevel and on the top here where the cap is gonna tie in as well. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tack these plates to the backing strap. So as you can see, we've cleaned our backing strap up, we've cleaned the bevel up, and we've come up and we've cleaned the top of the plate a little bit where the weld is actually gonna tie in. All surfaces where the weld is gonna to touch, tie in, be bent, you want all of that to be clean so that the weld kind of grips a hold of that metal with nothing in between it like mill scale, rust, dirt, water, anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tack these at the ends here, here and here, and then on the back side, or at the top side here and here, then we'll flip it over and put a couple welds on the back. A couple things to note when you're doing this. You wanna make sure that the plate, you see I've got a chisel position underneath this plate and a quarter inch by one inch backing strap placed underneath this plate. That's because I don't want the plates to be bent up, and I'll go ahead and get myself to where you can see this. You don't want the plate to do that. Right. And in order for it to be flush, you need to prop something up underneath it so it's level with the surface you're welding on. So again, if it's up like this and has any gap, when you go to bend that root, it's going to crack wide open. All right, so we maintain pressure. We don't want that, that plate to rise up. So we just keep maintaining pressure. If you've got to grab a pair of ice grips to lock that in place, do so. But if your fit up is decent, from the first weld, you should be all right. Go ahead and tack the other plate into place. It's always important to just adjust to what's going on. You don't want to just do the same thing every time. And actually, you can get a shot of this. So see the gap right here? And as we go ahead and put the clamps over it, you can see at the end here, it close up. See that? So lock it in place. Let it kind of cool for a second. Take your chisel, any type of BBs or anything in the center. It's gonna allow for poor fit up on the next plate. You wanna go ahead and get those out of there. All right. And we'll tack that second plate up. We'll grab our wire brush, just kind of clean down the bevel where our weld's gonna be deposited. Looking for a clean consistency throughout. And then we'll flip it over to the back side. Just put a couple tacks on there, about three quarter of an inch to an inch in, in length. Nothing too serious. They're tack welds, so they're just holding your fixture in place. When you weld it, it's gonna it's gonna put it all together. So that's basically it. You know, just small little tacks on there. This is our most important side is the fit up there. So once that fit up is good to go, you tacked on the top. You're tacked on the bottom. You've got your tacks in place on the back. Wire brush and clean all your BBs and slag out and you are ready to go. Rod angle varies between welder. Um, I like to angle my rod down a little bit in my stinger. It's just easier for me to control. But the goal here is to have this plate and this plate fuse into the backing strap. In order to do that, you need to manipulate the puddle. Now, these rods are gonna deposit a lot of metal. So you, these are drag rods, so you're gonna to wanna to drag it. You do not wanna push this rod through the bevel. You want to drag it. 
That'll allow the puddle to solidify behind you without trapping any slag where you're headed. So again, you wanna drag it. If you push this rod, what's gonna happen is that puddle's gonna jump in front of you and you're gonna weld over it. And although it might look good, what's gonna happen is you're gonna trap slag and you're gonna trap BBs and, and any, anything that doesn't need to be in there. So we're gonna drag this all the way through and hopefully we'll be able to get through in one rod. All right. Dude, I was filming you doing that, and all I could see was like a giant swirling blob of slag. Yeah, man, it, it is super important that you keep a really, really steep drag angle. You gotta uh, shovel that at the back of the puddle or something, yep, right? Yeah. Yep, keep it all at the back of the puddle, keep a really steep drag angle, so that way you're not trapping any slag. All right, good. No, this is this is pretty good. You can see where the needle scaler left its mark, but uh, <laughs> we're, what are you looking for here? Just like no big slag holes and that the... Uh, the toe lines are gone, the bevel edges or whatever? Yeah, you're looking for the bevel edges you can see here to be gone, and, and really that weld is really tied in. These are really hot rods. You know, obviously we're gonna wanna scrape these BBs out not to keep anything in the in the puddle. All right, so on this second pass too, we're just gonna oscillate kind of side to side to spread that stringer out um, and just kind of cover up that pass. We're just gonna move side to side, um, oscillating it, filling it up as best as we can. Alright, so we put our second pass in, slightly oscillating the weld side to side, like such, to get an even spread. And now we're going to start tying in our stringers on the sides here. Alright, so now instead of being straight down the center, now we're going to start to cock our rod to the side to tie into the toe. So either side that you tie into, you just need to make sure that your rod angle is pointed to the according toe. So for this instance, I'll probably do the far side first. Then we'll probably spin the plate around, angle this way, and do the other side. So basically now that we have positioned our welds to be angled in, um, now that we're flush, you basically just keep working this process all the way up to the cap. And obviously as you get higher, you're gonna have to put three passes in as opposed to just two. So more to come. Yeah, so you're basically saying just keep running beads and watching and doing whatever's necessary so they're level-ish? Absolutely, yeah. The goal here is level, not underfilled in the middle. All right, so we have worked our way to the cap. It Indeed, been, we have, what is that, four passes it looks like? Yep, four passes right before the cap, so we'll probably do four, maybe five. Um, depending on how it goes, you know, like I always say, just adjust, adjust to what you gotta do. If you, gotta, if you can run it with four, run it with four. If you can do five, do five. Um, it's whatever the welding procedure calls for. So we are flush as best as we possibly can. Anytime you get any type of slag or BBs or anything right before the cap, scrape everything off, make everything clean, get all the little potholes out of there. We're going to go ahead and cap this off and show you what it looks like in just a minute. Or, or just glove it. Yeah, all right, go for it. All right, so what we got going on here, I want to talk about the overlap of the welds. Let me grab a welding rod. So, if you'll notice, we're tying in the welds. Hat, we're eclipsing half of the previous weld. So you'll see on this next weld and the other ones that we do, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna deposit my weld to eclipse half of the previous weld. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna ensure 
optimal penetration, optimal tie-in. So that way when it comes under a stress or a tensile stress test, you know it's not gonna tear. Um, if you spread them too far apart and you create a valley or a crater, then um, it's just like trying to pull your fingers apart. You know, this is the way that I always explain it to my students. If you lock hands like this, it's much tighter. If you lock hands like this, it's not as tight. Yeah. So we want our welds to get in really, really tight. So nice. That overlay is very across important. the crests. Absolutely. Nice. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, and we are about to put our fifth and final stringer on there. Always keeping a drag angle. That's important. Watch for undercut on the last welds on your cap. If you're too steep or not steep enough, not enough straight up and down or perpendicular would be the correct term to the plate. If you're more parallel to the plate, then you can cause undercut on the edge there. So you want to try and stay as perpendicular as possible with a slight drag. Officially capped off. This plate is screaming hot as you can see, but we are just above flush. Um, five stringer cap, everything went pretty well for the most part. No, not too many complaints. Just keep in mind when you're running the 7024 rod, it is hot, it deposits metal very fast, it has an excessive amount of spatter, um, similar to a 6010, but all in all, it has a very, very clean weld profile as you can see. All right, big thank you to instructor Steven with the Georgia Trade School. Link in the description. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone.